Hi, um, I'm Ian Sinderman. I'm one of the researchers here at ISC Labs. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. Now, normally our content is focused more on IoT devices and our exploits and shenanigans uh, surrounding them. But today we're going to go on a bit of a side quest, do a tiny bit of uh, hardware hacking. And we're going to do that on the uh, DC Furs Wrenchbox badge. This is a wonderful little badge. It has a variety of different things on it, including the LED matrix, um, little looper, uh, accelerometers, and some uh, Bluetooth stuff. Now, the Bluetooth stuff is what I'm interested in. Now, it has this um, proprietary, I guess proprietary, communication protocol via Bluetooth broadcasts. And most badges can receive uh, most of them, but most badges cannot transmit all of them. I want to change that. So, I'm going to, with any luck during this stream, I'm going to um, basically take the old firmware, pull it off, um, we could analyze it, but since it's open source, we're just going to compile some new firmware and we will upload that firmware and learn a few things along the way. So I guess if we'll switch to the document camera, we can take a look at the badge itself and figure out what we're working with. So I pop the batteries out. The surprisingly long lasting batteries that went all through DEF CON. So again, on the front, we have the LEDs, the touch sensor, uh, SAO header. But more importantly, on the back, we have stuff like the STM32, and that is our main MCU that runs uh, MicroPython, that has USB support, and even has a USB bootloader that can be used for firmware flashing. So that kind of takes the fun out of it. If we look over here, we have a uh, Bluetooth module. This is, let's see if I can remember the name for it, the EYSGCNZ Bluetooth module. But it's basically just an NRF51 with some extras added onto it. So I'm just going to call it NRF51 because I cannot remember that. Uh, and the NRF51, it's basically just a tiny little, uh, I think, ARM Cortex M0 uh, processor with some extra goodies. So at its core, it is just an ARM processor, talking to an, a, a different ARM processor via serial. Now this Bluetooth module is what we're focusing on. So again, what we want to do is pull off the firmware and put new firmware on. Now, when this was constructed, they had to flash it somehow. This could have been at the factory, uh, but that requires usually very large numbers of parts or paying an extra fee. I uh, kind of doubt that that happened. Uh, it could have also been flashed before be, uh, it was put on the device, but that's an extra step since they were doing uh, pick in place. That's a very big extra step. So again, I doubt that they did that. We also see these two pads right here. Now they're right next to the device. They look like something that you know, bed of nails, that sort of thing can interact with. Uh, and if we type in those two labels into Google, we can find out that, hey, this is a SWD interface or a serial wire debug. This is an ARM specific interface for debugging and uh, firmware, uh, firmware flashing and that sort of thing. So that sounds like exactly what we're looking for. There are a lot of similar things like this. There's a JTAG, which is more, um, it was initially designed for more QA, testing boards, development, that sort of thing. But firmware and stuff was added onto it later. Um, there's also SWJ-DP, which is just JTAG over SWD, but this, just SWD. But all we need is firmware. So now we just need to connect to it. And to do that, I'm going to use a little bit of kit. Now this, uh, it's sold as an ST-Link V2. It is not. It's a ST-Link V2 phone. But it costs $3 and it works great. So yeah, I'm, I'm totally using that instead of the expensive one. We see on this device, we have three very important pins. There's the uh, SWCLK, which we also have over here. There's also SWDIO, again, over here. And then ground, which we can put in a variety of locations. We could use the, uh, the casing for the USB port or what I'm going to do is use the ground pin for the um, SAO header because we can haphazardly stick things in. So first up, I'm going to solder some wires onto the SWCLK and SWDIO uh, pads. I can use different things. Like initially when my soldering iron was between here and Las Vegas, I just used tape. I don't recommend using tape. It doesn't work very well, but it does work. But since we have a soldering iron, just use that, pin the wires, and 
Okay, so we'll use a flux pin if we have it. Apply some flux so that the pads don't get too dirty. I will also tin these pads. Okay. Should also note, I'm very new to this. So you are learning as I do. We have the two pads very hastily pinned. You can just take wire. That being tinned as well, we can just stick the two together. Seems good. Go on to SWDIO. Those two together. Seems good to go as well. And for ground, I'm just going to skip soldering. That. So now, that's really all we need to do hardware wise. So it's hardware hacking, but it's very intro hardware hacking. So now we just have to connect these wires up to the uh, quote unquote ST link. So this is the clock, that right over here, like that. And then IO goes in between clock and ground. I can get in there. There we go. So we have IO and clock connected. Just haphazardly stick it in the ground pin like that. Now, just a matter of connecting the two devices to my computer, the badge so that it gets power, and the ST link so that it can program the thing. So software-wise, I'm going to be using OpenOCD. Uh, there are many alternatives, but OpenOCD is what I know, and I know that it, it will work fairly well. So that's what I'm going to use. So we'll get the two connected. So now hopefully if we switch over to computer, run OpenOCD, I'm going to specify two config files for this. The first one is, let's see, go slash interface, or not slash, interface slash dash v2.cfg. Because again, we're using the st link v2. Fairly straightforward. Next config file is target slash nrf51.cfg. Because at its core, this uh, Bluetooth module is just an nrf51. Now, any luck. When I run this, OpenOCD will connect and we'll be good to go. It appears that we are good to go. So now OpenOCD has attached to the SWD interface, um, and now it is running a Telnet server on port 4444 and a GDB server on port 3333. I don't know how to use GDB, so I'm just going to use Telnet because it's very easy and we're not trying to do a whole bunch here. So, Telnet into host 4444, we now have access to the on-chip debugger. And there's a whole ton of commands we can run. Uh, help will quite handily list all of them, but we're only interested in a few. The first thing we'll want to do is run reset halt to quite simply reset the MCU and halt execution, just so software doesn't get in our way. We'll run that now. have succeeded. Now we want to get the original firmware off. It's partly because you know if we screw something up, it's very nice to have that firmware. But it's also so that if we didn't have source, we can then analyze it. Uh, if I recall correctly, the entry point for this firmware should be uh, I think Xerox 10,000. So if you pop it into Ida Pro, just go to Xerox 10,000 and press I think C, it should open up most of the uh, decompiled code. But since we have source, screw that. We can just compile our own, much easier. So, but we still want that backup. We'll run dump image and specify a file name. In this case, I'll just do original.bin. And then we need two memory addresses, the start and end memory addresses on flash for the firmware. Now, after much Googling, reading documentation, eventually stack I determined that this, uh, these two addresses are 0x0 and 0x40,000. 